Welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Emma, behind the camera is Alex, and today we are in Sedona, Arizona, USA. After a great couple of days spent with friends in New Mexico, we jumped back in the driving seat and started to make our way back west. Good morning and welcome from our favorite hotel in America. <laughs> we are in a place called Payson, which is about a two hour drive away from a place called Sedona, which we were reading up on last night. And it, it's also very conveniently one of the warmest places around. So actually it's one of the only places that we can sleep and escape the freezing weather. We'd never heard of Sedona before coming, but thanks to loads of subscribers, they mentioned Sedona so many mm -hmm. times. Also locals keep telling us we have to go there. We're gonna go find out why it's so special. When we were arriving somewhere at night, like, it's like a lottery, like I have no idea. When it's dark, you know you're in nature because there's no street lights around. But I have no idea what I'm actually going to expect from the landscape. So this morning to wake up and it's just all these trees. It's just so different to what we've been seeing having been in the desert so much. vicinity and I've never seen an elk or I think they're in the same kind of family as a moose like huge animals but I'm mean, probably not gonna see one but I just love seeing the signs of the like the weird and different animals that I'm not used to and the possibility of seeing them yeah Sedona is located in the center of Arizona state, surrounded by 1.8 million acres of national forest land. Sedona is known as Red Rock Country, and it's easy to see why. The city is surrounded by striking red sandstone formations unique to the area around Sedona. However, these rocks aren't only known for their beauty. People travel from all over to experience the vortexes located within the rocks around Sedona. These vortexes are said to be swirling centers of energy that can help to inspire, heal, and recharge those who visit them. We have come up to the overlook of Sedona, which is actually located right next to Sedona Airport, and everyone knows that airport parking is crazy expensive, so we've had to splash out a whopping $3 to park up the car to get this epic view behind us. So I know that you're joking and saying that's uh, really cheap, but for me, the, like, the tight-fisted part of me is like $3 for a viewpoint. That should be free. Yeah, you say it's expensive, but it's $3 for the whole day, so if you want to go off and hike and walk from here, you can just park up and go from here. We already check to see if there's overnight parking because we thought it'd be a really good place to stop for the night but unfortunately violators will be towed. <laughs> I have been assured by the internet that there are four vortexes. <laughs> What's a vortex, Sedona. Alex? Well, I always thought a vortex was like a portal but apparently here the vortex is certain rocks that have like energy like swirling around and you can really feel the energy when you go there i'm a very logical person but i'm also a very <laughs> open-minded person so i'm trying not to go in close-minded over the next few days hopefully we will go and experience a few of these vortexes and we will report back about how great we feel i just asked the guy working at the parking lot this is to be saying parking lot instead of car park. Anyway, I asked the guy there about the vortex and he said that actually this whole area is kind of a vortex, but if we want to be closer to the vortex then to take the Sedona View Trail to the bottom, it's only 0.6 of a mile and you can be at the vortex. So that's where we're going now. <laughs>
chest feels really light, almost like I've got butterflies in my chest. Are you saying that you feel the you know? vortex? I'm saying I can smell the fresh pine mountain air and it's making me feel happy inside. Oh, the vortex is making me feel happy inside. Who For knows? me, it just feels like normal nature. I mean, it's lovely. Well, we're here. We made it to the, the viewpoint and it's a very, like, calm place. Once everyone goes, it was a little bit busy when we first got up here. But now everyone's gone, it's like really quiet, really peaceful. And it's like a 360 view of beauty in every direction. <laughs> I can't believe we're this far into the US series and I haven't done a burger section. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I've been eating burgers off camera like the best of them. <laughs> but we have just found this spot here in Sedona that looked like a must. They have these buns that like, we just don't have in England. Look at like, I mean, I don't like the fact that it like looks so perfect. Like, yeah. There is not one blemish on this bun. No, it's a, a perfect bun. So when it comes to burgers, I have a couple of simple rules. Yeah. Basically, it's got to have bacon, it's got to have some form of cheese, and then the rest is up for debate. I know that it's always going to be a good place if they ask what, how I want my burger cooked, if they just don't assume that I want it extremely well done, because I am a medium rare man. This burger here is pepper jack cheese, bacon, jalapenos, and some spicy Arizona sauce. Don't, like, it's so pristine, I don't want to bite it. <laughs> It's like it's so lovely and bubbly and spicy. Mm. First bite, I knew. Incredible. <laughs> I knew Incredible. this was the burger for me. Oh, so spicy. Just the meat, the bacon. I, I hate to admit this, but I do love American bacon on burgers. Yeah. The sort of streaky one. I also really, oh, this is blasphemy, but I love American cheese on burgers. <laughs> I think English what? cheese, like cheddar, just doesn't work on a burger. Yeah all of their cheese works here because it's very mild. <laughs> That's true actually. Something I love about the US is that every time you get full they will give you a doggy bag, a takeaway box and like we have this in England but it seems that you can do it anywhere. Anywhere, any <laughs> meal you're eating and you get full, you can take it home. And no one judges you No one it. judges you, it's crazy. <laughs> but that's not what I want to tell you about. What I want to tell you about is just before I left I found myself a root beer. I have never had a root beer. I actually have zero knowledge about what is inside this root beer. Okay, so inside we've got cane sugar. Mm -hmm. So no, no corn syrup. Yeah, this is a fancy oh. one. I think. You've gone for the fancy one, not for the like bog standard one. I've been in America too long now because I've just read that it's caramel colours. Yeah. <laughs> caramel colours. So there's no there's no flavour. Well, it just says yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't say it's like. It's not a, a flavor, flavor or like well in the same way coke's not a flavor it's just coke flavor and root beer is just root beer flavor oh okay well enough judging <laughs> also twisty tops are awesome we don't have those so often in the uk oh god it smells dreadful <laughs> oh that smells so bad wait let me just just quickly let's have a smell see if you like the smell oh god that takes me back to my childhood it smells disgusting it smells like medicine. <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> For any Brits watching or anyone that's not from America that's never tried or smelled it, it's like <laughs> that stuff that your mum would give you when you've got like a cough and you don't get to have the yes. fun medicine, you get to have like the serious medicine that doesn't taste good. <laughs> this is what this is. Yeah. That's crazy. That's literally it tastes like medicine. Yeah. It's like, it kind of reminds me actually of, um, uh, Jaeger. Yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> it's not bad, but it's not good. How is this like popular? Like I hear about this in like American movies, TV shows as a kid, like root beer, root beer floats. I can't stop drinking it though. <laughs> so maybe on some level you like it. I mean, like in a weird nostalgic I'm sick kind of way. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> some kind of like self-deprecating like I want to be taken care of by my mum. <laughs> It is getting dark in Sedona, so Alex and I have to go and find ourselves a place to sleep and we're going to try something called boondocking, which I've never heard of, but apparently is a thing. And it's basically where you just park up on public land and just sleep there. So we're going to try it. It's getting dark and we don't really know what to do. It looks like you can kind of sleep anywhere here in Sedona. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure of the rules, but when we look online, you can kind of sleep wherever. You can't sleep in the centre of Sedona, obviously, because it's pretty busy um, but I think any public lands is okay and we found a guy on a blog who said that he parked somewhere up on this road so we're just gonna go in that direction and see what happens so to wrap this up thank you very much for watching give it a thumbs up also leave in a comment have you ever been caught up by a vortex <laughs> and have you ever been boondocking don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to find out if we were successful in our boondocking experience Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> See you next time and beans out! Next time on Travel Beans. There is a spot here. There's other cars there. I don't mind having a couple of neighbours. I prefer. Do you remember how dark it was last night? It was scary, especially because you can hear the coyotes and stuff. I don't want my face to be torn off and for no one to know about it.